Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the September meeting of Fusion, our monthly member meeting. And we are recording this meeting. Uh, my name's Andrea, and I'm an executive member and the comms officer for the party. Now, tonight's meeting, we'll have some general party updates, but we'll also introduce the upcoming AGM, which is in a little under four weeks. Some of these updates will be about the Victorian campaign, hence the Leadbeater's Possum, the fauna emblem of the state. So we'll start with an update on membership. And uh, we have 1,793 members as of uh, the end of last month. Um, we've got the breakdown there of the branches, but this uh, this pink wedge for fusion is always growing as people are electing to join the the fusion party proper. Uh, we still have the the uh, the branches that were the the founding parties that merged to form fusion who maintain their um, affiliations. Now, um, I think we've got also new membership for the month which is currently at eight but I think that doesn't count about 30 members that have been signed up in the last week or two yeah that's right um these numbers I, I should have taken a, a more recent cut but I usually do for the previous full month so this was purely for um for August so it doesn't include anyone who's, who's come on board in September as you mentioned I think there's 20 maybe close to 30 new ones, uh, new members in the last few weeks. A great uh, effort by our, our Victorians, particularly Simon. Mm -hmm. um, and that's yeah, very important as we are drawing closer to the deadline for Victorian registration. So we're aiming for that 500 members to return a form to the Victorian Electoral Commission to confirm our registration very soon. Um, all right, uh, Roger, did you want to talk about the upcoming AGM now? Yeah, so AGMs, everyone's always super excited about an annual general meeting. Uh, so as part of being a member um, of the party, that you are also a member of the association um, that forms this. So we're an um, incorporated association registered in Victoria, and we have um, requirements to, to run an AGM once a year, which... Um, you know, make sure that we're we're following all the right processes for an organisation, um, and we obviously use it for um, the best purposes that we can uh, within the this group. This will actually be the first AGM since we've come together uh, as the the founding parties uh, came together towards the end of last year, um, and and added on obviously fusion as a whole as well. So. Um, it's a really exciting time to be able to, to come together um, as a complete group for our first AGM. Uh, now, the main things that we do in an AGM is uh, constitutional changes. So because the constitution is, is how the organisation runs, uh, that, that any changes to that um, needs to be done uh, by special resolution, which is across all members. Um, so they're generally done at, at an AGM or a, um, an SGM, so a special general meeting. So there'll be some proposed changes going forward there. There'll also be um, some reports provided, mostly from the secretary uh, and treasurer, just to update the members on how things are progressing within the organisation. Um, and then... The most exciting one there, I think, is the committee elections. So that's pretty cool um, in terms of you know being able to elect the the leadership organization, you know, organizing group um, for the organization, which is really cool. Um, and I'll touch on proxies a little bit as well. Um, so I won't go into too much detail. But for the constitutional changes, we will spend some time at the AGM discussing those, but we'll likely pass the actual voting for the constitutional changes into an online vote. Uh, that way we can spread the, the vote out to all members who are registered with us, um, not just those who can make it to the actual AGM. And that will follow the, the date. Speaking of which, did we mention the date? No. 23rd of October. Sunday, 23rd of October, yes. Book it in your calendars. Um, there will be an official 
notification come out um, this coming weekend. So keep an eye out on emails. But yeah, Sunday, the 23rd of October. And then the committee elections. So the committee elections are for all office bearing positions. So that's the president, the secretary, treasurer, uh, convener, national campaign coordinator, and registered officer. Now, we also do have um, branch representatives. Those are appointed by the branches and are nominated for the executives. They aren't up for election as part of an AGM, but all of those other roles are. And this is the first time that we're really opening up uh, these positions to the new members who aren't part of those branches. So um, the branches obviously pulled together um, from their from each of their own leadership groups into the current executive committee. And um, with this election, we'll be able to open that up to all members, which is a great opportunity if you think you can um, contribute in a more formal sense um, to how the, the organisation is run. Um, not to say that there's not other opportunities. So one of the great things um, with, with Fusion is that we're a very open uh, organization and value the time and effort of all of our volunteers. So there's lots of ways that you can get involved um, just to be part of any of those other subcommittees or groups that are just doing things um, within the, the party. So definitely reach out um, to get involved. So we'll be taking nominations um, from this weekend onwards for any of these positions. They'll be um, up on the website prior to the date so that everyone gets a chance to, to read through. Anyone who's nominated for a position will be given a chance to um, speak on the day as well and to address the members. And then similar to the constitutional changes, we'll likely put those um, to an online vote um, after the AGM is run to give all of our members an opportunity um, to vote on those. Uh, and because we're doing a bit of an online thing, we might be changing how the proxies work um, from how the SGM uh, ran earlier this year. But all of that information will be in the notification, which will come out this coming weekend. So keep an eye out on emails and I'll give you all the information about um, the upcoming AGM and how to get involved. Well, thank you, Roger, for the rundown. It's a good milestone for the party uh, one year after its formation. Um, okay, let's move on to the next point. Thank you, Roger. The next point being the finances with our treasurer, Michael Moroski. All right, thank you, Andrea. Just a quick uh, uh, statement. Um, talk about the, uh, the, the month of September. As always, there's a little bit left in the month, so there's a couple little of adjustments, but um, it has been a relatively quiet month other than some of the activities that have been going on for the Victorian election and Victorian registration. So just um, looking at the profit and loss report, um, we have in here, uh, just skipping down, skipping past that interest income. Um, in other income, we have, uh, there's an amount here of just expense contributions in, in parenthesis means negative there. That's just pertaining to a, uh, a candidate reimbursement that was that was done um, uh, with the, within this month. Usually, those would be counted towards the the month that the things were originally done in. But the wait, but just there's a little finicky accounting thing that puts that in this month. Donations of four hundred thirty six dollars, uh, which is pretty good. Um, it's a good. That's sort of been the sort of the steady sort of amount. It's been slow. It's been slowly rising. Um, it's mostly thanks to monthly donors. Uh, those monthly donations are really good for us because it lets us know uh, what we can expect generally, rather than just in sort of occasional lump sums. Uh, down to expenses, uh, I am endeavoring, I will be endeavoring soon to try to make these a little bit more useful in terms of the, the names. Consulting accounting is effectively just our zero account that we pay for every month. Uh, so we don't pay for any accounting services. That's zero just... Zero with an X. Yes, zero with an X, uh, where these reports come from. Um, events is just a single one-off payment we've made recently for uh, meetup.com, which we've used for it's just promoting of, I believe, just this event. But uh, Not this event, but a couple of in-person meetups in Brisbane and Melbourne. Cool. Um, so general expenses is a service we've used uh, called ClickUp, 
which has been used, sorry, click send rather, which has been used to send messages uh, out to people for the purposes of uh, confirming names for Victorian registration. Uh, IT services and subscriptions, that is mostly our regular monthly things of uh, Nation Builder, which is our membership management system and other things. Uh, but there is also in there a uh, domain that was purchased. And then transaction fees is just the amount that we uh, that we spend on to receive the donations we get. Um, so at the end of that, we have the 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 net profit there is a is in brackets again, which means negative. So that's not always a bad thing. It's good to, we got to, we want to be spending the money we have rather than uh, just holding on to it and not doing anything with it. Um, but we obviously also want to be building up a war chest for uh, elections. So and then just quickly in the balance sheet, we are sitting on about nine thousand seven hundred dollars. Um, including the sort of outstanding payables, various bills we have to pay and things like that. Um, so that's uh, that's where we're sitting at the moment. Uh, not sort of uh, be good, great to be bringing in some more money, but also uh, things to spend money on is good as well. Uh, we can't be, uh, we want to make sure that if people are donating, that they know that their money is going somewhere that is uh, important and useful, um, that we're not just sitting on it doing nothing or blowing it on things that are frivolous. So we will always endeavor to, that's why we endeavor to make this as transparent as possible as to what we're, um, what we're spending, where we're spending the money. And, uh, we're also open to like, if people getting involved, if there's people sort of suggestions of, of ways to promote ourselves, uh, or various kinds of things we could be doing. Um, the, there's the, the channels are always open. Thanks, Michael. I'd just like to go back to that IT services and subscriptions and point out the uh, domain name that you mentioned. So our website is fusionparty.org.au. And just in the last few weeks, uh, websites ending in just .au without the .net or .org or .com or .anything else um, have been released. So we snapped up the domain fusionparty.au we don't have plans yet to do anything with that, but uh, we didn't want anyone else to buy that and uh, put something in there that's uh, misleading or that might um, take away attention and uh, potential followers from us. Now we have a question in the chat. Do new members still have an option to join the branches or are they only able to join the main Fusion banner? And Rogers answered that their uh, fusion members are welcome to join any one of the party's associated branches as well. Um, so again, get in contact with us. You can email contact at fusionparty.org.au. Uh, we can sign you up to one of the branches if you would like. So those are um, they're organizations that still exist, but are under the umbrella of the registered party fusion. Another point in the chat there that fusionparty.au should be redirected to fusionparty.org.au and I think you're quite right. Um, all right, we'll move on if uh, there's no questions about the finances, in which case we'll be moving on to our Victorian election updates. So the Victorian election, state election is coming up on Saturday, November 26th. So that's just two months away. Um, and I believe Miles' uh, campaign convener will give us an update. Hi, everyone, and thanks, Andrea. So it's been a very busy few months and uh, got some exciting updates and some uh, not so exciting updates. We're currently in, in the second stage of the campaign, so that kicked off at the end of August, where we began a large-scale engagement campaign to uh, reach out to our Victoria members to get in contact with them, get them involved with the campaign. So that had two main goals, which was to um, get new volunteers for the campaign, but also to uh, help support people to get their uh, membership forms back to the Victoria Electoral Commission to make sure that our, our, our membership application would go through. So since starting that campaign, uh, it's been going for exactly one month. Over that time, we've had six volunteers working directly on the Victoria phone banking campaign, along with support from three national membership officers. And since August, 
we gained a total of 201 Victorian members and supporters. So uh, that's a really exciting number. And um, that came from a number of different sources. So we did have the, um, we did have a lot of uh, members signed up through volunteers and through campaigning, as well as through content we put out and other sources as well. And since we've started the engagement campaign over the last month, we've gained 28 of that. So most of our new members came in the wake of the federal election or uh, in the as we started to build up the Victoria presence there. Oh, sorry, I misread my notes there. Uh, we've, that's actually we've actually contacted a total of 201 Victorian members uh, since August and gained 28 new members. All right, that's my mistake. 10 to 20 have come just in the last fortnight, I believe. So the campaign has been scaling up. We've had a uh, steady gain of about one new volunteer every week or so out of the whatever 20 to 40 people we contact during that week. So that's a fairly good turnaround. Obviously not all the volunteers carry through or go through with their training, but um, that's it, it is a big ask. And for a lot of our volunteers, some of our volunteers are interstate as well outside of Victoria. And so they don't have that uh, direct commitment to campaigning there, which, which is totally fine. So um, the, the way we've been bringing in volunteers at this stage, all of the volunteers have been uh, joining the remote engagement campaign. So basically they've been phone banking. So what we've done is gone through a, uh, a training with each of our volunteers to get them comfortable to talk to uh, other people about politics and to talk to other volunteers and members. So all the calls have been warm calls, there's been no cold calls. We've only been calling existing members and the vast majority of them have been very supportive and, and helpful. And uh, a, lot, uh, a lot of the people we contact obviously don't have time to volunteer, but being all, uh, being all supportive, there, um, there's been a small bump in uh, engage, engagement in other parts of the party, and I don't have the numbers, but I have gotten basically pledges for donations from a number of people that I've contacted. Um, so through this training, we, we've been giving call scripts to volunteers and said, these are our goals. We've had very clear, explicit goals for the campaign as well. So the main goal is just to get members to return their member forms to the Victoria Electoral, Electoral Commission. And uh, when we do manage to contact a member, there's an 80 to 90% chance that they'll say, oh, yes, um, sorry, I forgot. Or can you remind me how to do that? Or, or can you give me some help? As I said, a lot of these volunteers are interstate as well. So it's it's quite easy and there's a relatively low time commitment. The training is only about 20 to 30 minutes, 30 minutes long. And um, again, that involves how to talk to people about politics, what the goals of the campaign are. We go through the script as well as how to use our online member platform called Nation Builder. And there's also a, a privacy access agreement, which we get people to read and understand because they're obviously looking at personal information of our members. So that's not all members now under the, the new system for phone banking we've set up. The access is quite restricted for volunteers only to the people that they're contacting. And so it's much more, um, privacy is, is much, is very tightly protected. So that was one of the, one of the goals there. Uh, if anyone is interested in helping and supporting, you can put in as many or as little hours uh, or, or as time as you feel comfortable with. As we get close to the election, the, the time commitments will ramp up. We can always find space to use more volunteers. So please feel free to get in contact with me during or after the meeting. The number of members we need in Victoria is 500. We have approximately 600 in our records at this, at this point, uh, which we've submitted to the Victoria Electoral Commission. So the first submission was just at the end of August, so exactly a month ago. And uh, since then, we have confirmed approximately 300 people have verified their membership. So yeah, Michael, you're right. Um, VEC needs to verify those members. They only need to verify 500. So it's quite common practice to submit significantly more than 500. We obviously put in all of our names. What we found is that there's approximately a 50% chance that a person will actually return their forms. 
So of, uh, so of the 300 we've contacted, that's also been verified by the VEC that about 300 people have returned their forms, which is obviously short of the 500 required. Now, we haven't failed in our application yet. The, um, we've now completed the first round of verification as of Tuesday, yesterday. And we're waiting on the VEC to advise us when the second round deadline will be. I'm, I'm expecting it to be in about two to three weeks. So we need 200 more people to verify. And if we submitted 400 new names, then there would be a fairly comfortable chance of, of getting those 200 people. But as I said, we've already submitted the second round list. So uh, at this stage, that means it's uh, our application is unlikely to succeed. As I said, it hasn't failed yet, but um, assuming we have three weeks left for the next deadline, then we'd have to contact the 300, two to 300 of our members who haven't responded and get them all to return their forms. Uh, we're contacting people at a rate of about 20 to 30 a week. So we're probably not, even assuming we get additional volunteers come through, we're probably not going to be able to contact all of the members. So what we've been doing over the last month and what we'll do over the next month is focus on contacting the uh, most likely members to respond. And as part of that, we've had uh, bulk SMSs go out. We've also been doing bulk emails as well as the calling campaign. Now, in the event that our registration application fails, then we do still have candidates who are interested in running as independents. It does change a few things and we might we ha may have some candidates step back, but there's also a high chance that as we get close to the election, there will be more people stepping forward to nominate for can candidacy as well. Uh, so at this stage, we have one candidate has been fully authorized through the party processes. We have another three potential candidates who are interested and in working through that process currently. And we are open to more people expressing interest as well. So if anyone has, uh, has friends or family in Victoria, even if you're not in Victoria, please do get in touch with them, let them know about the party and uh, encourage them to sign up or volunteer. I'd say probably volunteering is more useful at this stage, but we're also quite happy to have members as that obviously does help. And even if not helping towards the Victoria campaign, then national members also count towards federal campaigns also. Yeah, thanks for that uh, update, Miles. Um, the, uh, the one candidate that we do have um, endorsed by the party so far is in the electorate of Bentley. So if you're in... Melbourne on the east side of Melbourne then that's uh, a great opportunity to volunteer for a candidate there whether we get registered or whether we are supporting Simon there as a independent candidate. I suppose now is crunch time. Um, the next few weeks will be our last chance we believe for this application and definitely uh, it is anyway because then it will be the the Victorian election. The writs are issued in early November after which we won't be able to get registered. Thank you, Miles. Are there any policy updates that you wanted to give us or is uh, is that something more of a Wednesday night Victorian campaign meeting thing for people to join if they're interested? People are obviously welcome to come along to the organising meetings and uh, contribute to the policy discussions. I'm encouraging the candidates to take the lead in the policies they want to campaign on. And so some of the policies that our candidates are really interested in include stopping deforestation in Victoria, which are obviously native habitat for various species, including the Leadbeater's possum, which is uh, our current campaign logo. Uh, we're also looking at um, issues with the water market distribution along the Murray-Darling Basin and uh, issues with regional access to health, particularly mental health as well as uh, regional access to transport. And um, so some of the ideas we have, including more access to buses and better bike lanes within urban areas, particularly around Melbourne. And uh, that includes also uh, better access and support for e-bikes and uh, public charging stations. They all yeah, fit in with the general fusion aims of uh, looking after people and looking after the environment and having a focus on a good future. Uh, long-term planning. Well, we might just then uh, move on to the last slide, which is events that are coming up. 
fusion events coming up. Uh, we've got Discord chats. So we've been talking mostly about policy development um, because our policy platform, um, you know, I'm, I'm quite proud of the work that was done a year ago to put that together and, and into the start of this year. Um, but it was, um, that was a process of finding what was common to all the parties that were merging. And uh, now I think is some time that we can look at this from a first principles approach and say, what is um, what is missing in our policy platform that we want to offer to the voting public? So that's uh, that tends to be the focus of our Discord chats that happen on the first and third Wednesdays of the month. That happens on Discord. I'll just put a link in the chat. Um, and also the link that we've got up there on the slide uh, slash events, that will also give you some instructions to um, help you get set up on Discord. If you haven't used it before, it's a, an online platform that we have a lot of text discussion and occasional voice chats. And obviously, as we mentioned, the annual general meeting coming up on Sunday, the 23rd of October. So uh, all members will get an email about that this weekend. And our next monthly member meeting will happen shortly after that because um, the rest of the party machinations go on on the following Wednesday, the 26th of October. Okay, I think that concludes the formal part of the meeting. Uh, so I guess we're opening up to general discussion. Thanks everyone. Something I'd like to mention is that um, we've been quiet on social media of late. Um, we have no social media machine at the moment. If, um, if you think we're not saying enough and you think there's something we should be talking about, pitch something to us and if it seems relevant and if Fusion has something to say, anyone has a, a chance to write uh, content, whether it's for social media or something longer form like a blog post, some hot button policy issues at the moment. I know uh, drug decriminalization and perhaps legalization is being talked about a lot at the moment and Fusion has policy in that area. And it would be nice if we introduce things like that with a, a little bit of writing on the topic to say why we are um, advocating for the positions that we advocate for.